Good afternoon. My name is Carrie Bagnall, and I won't go into how Jungle Friends Primate Sanctuary got started, but if you're interested, you can visit the website at junglefriends.org and you can learn how all this monkey business began. Today we're going to talk about research retirement, bridging the gap between research and sanctuary. For more than a decade, I've collaborated with lots of different universities and two of the most important things that the labs can do are to identify the right sanctuary and create a collaborative retirement plan that's workable for both the sanctuary and the university. There's a lot of information on the following slides, so I won't go through every bullet point, but if you email me, I'll send you the PDF of the presentation. Okay. Is the sanctuary financially secure? Sanctuaries are continually striving to be sustainable, and as a nonprofit, fundraising can be difficult when much of our contributions depend on the state of the economy. That's why it's so important for monkeys retiring to sanctuaries to come with substantial funding. Whether they come to us from a lab, a zoo, the entertainment industry, or someone's living room, we still need to fund their retirement. The top photo is Ricky. He retired last year from the same university that Herbie and Kilroy retired from. They're the two squirrel monkeys below. And Herbie and Kilroy were the first two research monkeys ever to retire at Jungle Friends. They retired in 2004 and they're both still here with us now. We have a very good relationship with this university and we are continuing to work together we still have about nine monkeys over there in uh, iron toxicity studies that will be retiring to Jungle Friends uh, very soon. So it, it pays to work collaborative, collaboratively with the universities and then you have a really strong relationship and a lot of the monkeys get to retire. When you're identifying a sanctuary, you want to make sure that the sanctuary is licensed, that they have the proper permits, and are accredited. Are they an APSA member? Accreditations are important because federal and state requirements for enclosure size is usually minimal. For example, our spider monkey habitat shown in these photos, it's 30 feet wide by 60 feet long and 24 feet high. We call this habitat Thunderdome. And you can see in the bottom photo, we have a lot of ropes so that the monkeys can brachiate. Spider monkeys like to go hand over hand, so we make sure that they have plenty of room to do that. Now this habitat is uh, home to four spider monkeys. And Florida Fish and Wildlife, even though they have more rules, regulations, and guidelines than any other state, their spider monkey enclosure for four spider monkeys is only 12 by 12 by 8 feet tall. So it's not even as large as one of our outdoor habitats for two, one or two marmosets. So it's, it's, it's minimal. So even if the sanctuary complies with state and federal governing bodies, you still want to visit the sanctuary to ensure that the sanctuary is suitable for your primate's retirement, especially if the sanctuary is not accredited. Here's a list of criteria that universities may look for in a sanctuary. Location, location, location. <laughs> Forbes says Florida is one of the top five states to retire. But more importantly, the weather is great for New World monkeys. They're built for hot, humid climates. Another thing that you want to look for is the sanctuary near a veterinary hospital with intensive diagnostics. That accepts primate patients. Even better, does the sanctuary have an on-site medical clinic? And philosophies are also an important thing to uh, look for. They differ from one sanctuary to the next, and they differ from sanctuary to university. Bongo, um, he retired from iron toxicity studies back in 2005, and he was healthy for 10 years, and then last year he suffered from paraplegia. He went through uh, quite a few vet visits and diagnostics and we were advised by the neurologist at the university where he was, he was studied to euthanize him. 
Instead, we built him a special rehabitat designed to help Bongo get around his enclosure using the ropes and ladders that you see here in the pictures. Fortunately, Bongo made a miraculous recovery. Despite not having Medicare, he can walk and run and climb and he was able to be reunited with his special friend Casey who just dotes on him with lengthy grooming sessions as you can see in this photo. And the vet at the university called me after I sent him a video of Bongo walking and all he could say was, I sure am glad you didn't kill him. So, you know, there's a lot of different philosophies with that. Um, another case we were working with um, a lab who was retiring critically endangered monkeys to jungle friends. And the vet at the lab thought it was unethical not to breed endangered species. And of course, as a sanctuary, we feel it is unethical to allow monkeys to breed in sanctuaries when there are so many monkeys in need of homes. The monkeys did end up coming to jungle friends and all the males are vasectomized. <laughs> And we continue to work with this university for other monkeys who are retiring here and they've referred me to other universities and medical centers for their monkeys who are retiring. And this is just a list of some of the policies and procedures that you're going to, that universities are going to want to look for uh, before they retire monkeys to sanctuaries. And all of these procedures and policies that are listed here are required for accreditation by GFAS, and they're the Global Federation of Animal Sanctuaries. So if a university is not able to visit or send someone to, to visit the sanctuary and have a tour, being accredited by GFAS or another accrediting body, there's also one called American Sanctuary Association, that's the next best thing. It's also very important to talk to the right people. And if you have special needs monkeys, you may want to talk to the veterinarian or the vet techs, or both. And you're going to want to discuss your monkey's individual needs and how the monkeys are grouped. Are they species isolated or socialized? When monkeys are species isolated, it's more difficult for them to be introduced to another individual, let alone a group. And some monkeys just seem to be mad at the world and are very difficult to socialize with others of their own kind. Here at Jungle Friends, we do our best to introduce the monkeys in a safe way, so it's important to know if there are any socialization issues in their history. Right now, we're building for 57 squirrel monkeys, and the researcher who's working with us is working with us in every aspect, from the beginning to the end where to locate the monkeys, the boys are in this building and the girls are in this building, but two of the boys need to be in the girls building because they don't like boys and on and on. And they're coming with several special needs monkeys are arriving too. One is blind and a couple of them have other, other um, health issues. So, you know, she's really working with us um, for for the best retirement for these monkeys. So much so, she is even coming with the monkeys to Jungle Friends and staying for a month to settle them in. We were asked to accept a large group of cotton-top tamarins. We were at capacity on our 12-acre parcel and the university we were collaborating with graciously purchased 20 acres of adjoining land so that we could build for their tamarins. In this spreadsheet, you'll see where we calculated their lifetime care. It's kind of a sticker shock when you look at that. Uh, but it was over $300,000 uh, just to age all of them out, and they were different ages, but they, you, we aged them up to 18 years, and we used an inflation rate of about 3%. And the cost for the building and the indoor enclosures with the attached outdoor habitats, permits, electrical, plumbing, etc., cost about $75,000, which isn't included on this spreadsheet. So the cost to retire 20 cotton-top tamarins of varying ages was about $380,000. So we, we do these spreadsheets for everyone, whether you're a university, retiring monkeys from research, or a zoo, or uh, monkeys in entertainment, or a pet monkey, and we can figure out how long, what the cost is going to be for their lifetime care. 
And this is a list of just some of the associated costs that universities and sanctuaries need to consider before um, or during the retirement planning process. It's important to let the sanctuary know if the university can assist with these costs. If not, are they willing to participate in fundraising efforts and allow the sanctuary to fundraise on their behalf? Most of the labs retiring monkeys to Jungle Friends ask for a confidentiality agreement. This greatly inhibits our fundraising ability, so we ask the universities to participate in fundraising for the monkey enclosures as well as for lifetime care. As it is with humans, financials play a big role in the retirement planning for monkeys. Ideally, if researchers will include retirement funds when writing the original grants or start requesting retirement grants prior to their retirement, it would make retiring monkeys to sanctuary homes much easier. In the top right photo, you'll see me and Howard. Howard is a squirrel monkey who was part of the very first group of squirrel monkeys who retired to Jungle Friends. This lab retired, required anonymity and could not assist with any funding in any way. So they did allow me to visit the monkeys and take photos of them in the lab to help with our fundraising efforts. On the bottom left is a video called the UGA Boys Retirement Plan that uh, the University of Georgia produced starring Dr. Fergazi and her capuchins. <laughs> they also did a press release, fundraising appeals to their alumni, and really helped out with the fundraising efforts. The bottom right is a photo of Professor Claudia Thompson. She's with one of the retiring capuchins from Wooster College. And when she wanted her monkeys to retire to Jungle Friends, she also created a campaign letter and her students produced a video to assist with the fundraising efforts. Wooster College and University of Georgia both awarded Jungle Friends a building grant for their retiring capuchins. And this is a general checklist for planning monkey retirements. The last bullet is optional, but if you can make it happen, do it. UGA allowed one of our board members to visit the uh, UGA boys in the lab several times to better prepare us for the transfer. And in this photo, you can see the staff members from the University of Georgia who traveled to Jungle Friends with the monkeys. The staff showed us how to use, how to, um, use the monkey transfer uh, boxes and from their home cages. These are actually their home cages that they lived at in the lab and they brought them with them here. And if you can see in that photo, there's a little capuchin in that little uh, box there. And how they got them out was to, they would put the box up, open up the um, slider door, the monkeys would run in and they could take them wherever they needed to. So it was really nice because we were actually able to release all of the monkeys into their runways from this little travel box. And these ladies all stayed overnight with the capuchins in the same building where they were living <laughs> and just to make sure that they settled in really well. So it's hard to kind of describe how we caught them and released them but if you go to our website and just type in UGA Boys in the search box, you can ex access all of the videos we took documenting their successful retirement to Jungle Friends. Open communication is imperative, and continuing communication is very welcome. Every tidbit of information that can be provided to us is important because it directly impacts the care the monkeys will receive in retirement. The photos above are illustrating the recent retirement of 33 cotton top tamarins. A professional transport company shipped the monkeys with a vet tech accompanying them. It was a two-day journey and the monkeys, of course, needed to be fed and watered throughout the journey, but several of the monkeys needed to be medicated. There were three diabetics, three with colitis, and one with gallbladder issues. The lab also sent these two giant binders with the monkeys and it contained all of their background information on each monkey and you see in in this photo where captain cuddles is reading through the information with our staff member lindsay the lab also sent their nest boxes in advance 
which we were able to incorporate into their indoor enclosures, which provided them a sense of familiarity and safety. And what we do is what's called a soft release, so the monkeys can choose when they want to go outside. This group of monkeys arrived on April 22nd, and so far, oh, like whew, about two months later, all but three pairs have ventured outdoors and Captain and Mrs. Cuddles were among the first to venture outside. They really enjoy their outdoor habitat and spend most of their days outside, and they even sleep outside, unless they hear a clap of thunder and it starts raining and they head right back in. Well, we have had quite a number of successes, as you can see by this graph, uh, over a de with over a decade of monkeys coming to Jungle Friends. And on the graph, you'll see the blue bar illustrates lab monkeys and the red bar illustrates expats. When we first started out, we primarily took in expats, but with more and more labs looking to retire their monkeys to sanctuary homes, you can clearly see the changing trends. And the distinguished looking monkey there in the background on our graph is Xenon, who recently retired from the University of Georgia. Two of our success stories include Dr. Charles Snowden from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and Dr. Dor Dorothy Fergazi of University of Georgia. Both Chuck and Dory were looking for homes to retire their monkeys, and Jungle Friends is more than happy to collaborate with both of them. In 2008, Chuck needed homes for 70 cotton top tamarins. At that time, Jungle Friends was near capacity, so we offered a home to 10 special needs monkeys. We also assisted Chuck with finding homes at other sanctuaries and zoos for the, the uh, their 60 cotton tops. We were able to accept Dory's nine capuchins last June, about a year ago, and both universities awarded us grants to assist with building, and UGA actively campaigned to the public and their alumni for donations to Jungle Friends. Chuck personally assisted with fundraising for his monkeys and continues to make personal donations toward their care. Chuck and Dory have both become wonderful supporters of the sanctuary and attended and spoke at our very first annual Monkey Day event in October 2013. They spoke about their roles in retiring monkeys to sanctuary homes. Both were very well received at the event. Chuck's monkeys were thrilled to see him, and Chuck brought a couple of the techs with him who also worked at the Cotton Tops, and they were they remembered them, and it was so great to see them seeing the people that they, they had known come back to visit. Dory first visited Jungle Friends about 13 years ago, and she was amazed at our growth and extremely happy when we were able to provide homes for her monkeys. And since then, since her monkeys retired here, she did come back to visit the monkeys and uh, commented on their beautiful tans. Chuck and I have continued to communicate over the past seven years, and Dory and I have had a number of conversations since her monkeys were here and were retired to Jungle Friends. So it's very important to keep the communications open, and the monkeys will be better for it. So thank you very much for listening to, uh, to me as I talked about Jungle Friends and universities collaborating to retire monkeys from research. And if you'd like a copy of this presentation, please feel free to email me. And that's Carrie Bagnall at junglefriends.org.